Now, the purpose of the virtual MIDI keyboard is it allow us to trigger MIDI, even if we don't have a MIDI keyboard or USB MIDI keyboard in your studio. You can still use your computer keyboard to trigger MIDI. So let's see how to do it. To open up the virtual MIDI keyboard, we'll go up here to the view menu and scroll down to the virtual MIDI keyboard. Or we could use the keyboard shortcut, Alt B on the PC or Option B on the Mac. Just choose it and it opens up a virtual MIDI keyboard down here. Now, right now it's docked, but if you want to float it in a separate window, we could right click, undock it from here, and it shows up like this, where we could make it bigger or smaller, move it around, or put it wherever we want. But if we want to dock it again, just right click and dock it right here, and it goes back to the bottom. But when it's docked, it could be on the bottom, left, top, or right, wherever you prefer. And as you can see, along with the MIDI notes, we also see letters or numbers from our computer keyboard, which you could use to trigger MIDI. So if I go to my drum track and put it in record, and it's set up to MIDI, all MIDI inputs, including the virtual MIDI keyboard, now I can hit my keys on my computer keyboard to trigger MIDI. This drum track has a drum machine already on it. So if I hit the Q key, it triggers C2, or the W key for D2, and so on. And the numbers are up here for two and three, five, six, and seven. Again, to trigger any MIDI note we want. Now you notice we're only seeing about two octaves, but if we want to trigger even more, make sure you choose arrow keys change octave right here. So if I hit the arrow key right, it goes up an octave. So now the Q key is C3. And so on. Hit it again. Now it's C4 or C5 and so on. But let's put it back to start at C2. Now besides doing octaves, we could also do it by notes. If we look over here, this is the center note in the middle of our keyboard. It's set to C2, so the Q key is C2. But if we right click this one, it moves it over one key. So now it's D2. We'll do this one. Now it's E2, and so on. And we could just type in different notes in here if you want. Or just right click the note you want in the center. Now, because a computer keyboard doesn't respond to velocity, velocity is not going to work with the virtual MIDI keyboard. Although, we can still choose different velocity notes just by using our mouse. If I click up here, it's quiet, move up, it gets louder. And what's going to happen is every time we choose one, we can now use a computer keyboard to trigger that velocity. For each note, with this instrument. They're all quieter or louder. And of course, we could also use the mouse to trigger notes if we want. Although it's kind of awkward to perform that way, but we could use it to choose a velocity, either quieter or louder. Let's start about here. Now, one of the downsides of using this keyboard is we also use keyboard shortcuts to trigger actions in Reaper. So if I click over here and type Q, it opens up Quantize. Or type N, it opens up Nudge. That's because the virtual MIDI keyboard is not in focus. If I click it again over here, then it is. So now if I hit Q, it triggers the virtual MIDI keyboard again, which can be annoying to jump back and forth. but we can use this option over here. This button is going to send our keyboard input to the virtual MIDI keyboard. So even if we click on our tracks over here, if I hit any of my computer keys, they still trigger the virtual MIDI keyboard. And if we want to go back to triggering our actions, just turn this off. But there's another way I prefer to do this, using a toolbar button. 
because we'll always see it up here. So we'll always know what mode we're in. Just right click, go to Customize Toolbar, go to Add, type in Virtual in the filter, and here's the action we were just talking about. You can give it a keyboard shortcut or just put it in the Toolbar button or do both, whatever you prefer. But let's select and close it. Now it's down here. Let's add a separator and give this an icon right over here. Type in key and I'll choose this one. Hit OK. Now it shows up right here. So if I click it or use a keyboard shortcut to trigger this, we could see we're back to using Reaper's keyboard shortcuts. So if I hit the Q key, it opens Quantize or the end key opens nudge. But if we choose it, and we can see that we've chosen it, now it's gonna trigger MIDI. No matter where we click, or which window is in focus. And with the toolbar button clearly visible in this mode, you'll know why your keyboard shortcuts aren't working. So now let's try to record a part. I've already recorded some bass, keys, and a vocal. Let's record a drum part on top. And I'm going to record it in two passes. One for the kick and snare and a china cymbal, like this. Another pass for my hi-hat. And we can see down here what notes I'm hitting. Let's give it a shot. We jumped off the subway leaving Rubbed off the cold around me I heard you say that everything is alright But how did you know how I felt? You saw right through me that day So let's record another pass This time playing the hi-hat And I'm going to put it in the mode For MIDI overdub right here This way it doesn't record over the kick and snare It records on top of it, like this. And again, we'll see the notes I'm playing down here, the five and seven keys. We jumped off the subway leaving nowhere. Your warm hands rubbed off the cold around me. I heard you say that everything is all right. But how did you know how I felt? You saw right through me that day. So let's take this track out of record and let's record a synth on top. But I have to change the octave for the synth. So again, I'll use the arrow keys to go up a few octaves. And this is going to sound like this. And again, I'm playing it on the keys down here. So let's see how it looks when we record it on this track. And to hear it better, let's turn off the vocal while we record that part. Now let's hear it play back with the vocal. We jumped off the subway leaving nowhere. Your warm hands rubbed off the cold around me. I heard you say that everything is alright. But how did you know how I felt? You saw right through me that day. It sounds pretty good. Now what are the use? that I like to use for the virtual MIDI keyboard is just monitoring it, even if I'm using a USB MIDI keyboard or a regular one. We'll see the notes still playing back over here. So I put it in record and play my USB MIDI keyboard. We see the notes represented over here, even though I'm not using the computer keyboard. So it's also useful just for monitoring the input of our MIDI controllers. 
But of course, if you don't have a USB MIDI controller, this is a great way to still play MIDI notes into Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's the virtual MIDI keyboard in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.